Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and a video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and a videos affiliate RingsideNews.com. We are coming off the post Hell in a Cell edition of Monday Night Raw from San Diego, California. Got lots of your questions from Twitter.com slash Aaron Rift regarding Hell in the Cell, Raw, Survivor Series, and so on. So let's get started today with the first one from PWPop.com. Could you see a Team Taker versus Team Wyatt's Survivor Series match with Undertaker, Kane, Sting, and Finn Balor versus the Wyatts? I have gotten so many questions about the Survivor Series pay-per-view, what's going on with Undertaker. Clearly, it looks like WWE is building up towards an Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt team versus team match at Survivor Series. Kane, the latest person to come out on Raw and get beat down by the Wyatts. Undertaker was carried out. Kane was carried out. We'll see what happens in the weeks leading up to Survivor Series. But one would think that that is the clear direction. It's Survivor Series. You do a four-on-four -four match. And that could be Undertaker's last hurrah. Perhaps at Survivor Series. Maybe entirely. We'll see what happens if he has one more match at WrestleMania, but you know, WWE is marketing it as the 25-year anniversary since The Undertaker's debut. As far as the other partners for Undertaker, Finn Balor would be a nice addition. As far as Sting goes, I think that that would depend on his health, if he's able to come back, if he'll be cleared to come back. Right now, there's been no indication on whether or not Sting is able to come back at this point. It would be awesome. Sting being part of Undertaker's team would be great, because if we don't get the Undertaker-Sting match, at least we would get to see Undertaker and Sting in the ring together. And who knows, maybe if Sting did appear, they could tease something between Undertaker and Sting and set something up for WrestleMania. Uh, but at this point, who knows if Sting will be part of it. I'm not sure who else you could put on that team because Cena's gone, Orton's gone. There's not a lot of options. Maybe Dean Ambrose. Actually, Dean Ambrose would make sense since he was feuding with Bray Wyatt. So I could see Dean Ambrose being one of the members of the team. And we'll just have to see how things play out in the next couple weeks and who's available. Uh, but certainly bringing in an NXT guy and having that person get a huge debut at Survivor Series by teaming with Undertaker... Um, that, that would be awesome. And you know how Undertaker debuted and became the phenom of the WWE. Uh, you know, it would be cool if somebody like Finn Balor debuted at Survivor Series and was the next phenom of the WWE. So, you know, there, there's an idea right there. All right, this one comes from Liam, Liam T98. Hey, Aaron is a big Kevin Owens fan. I was wondering, do you think his performances on Raw will elevate him further? Absolutely. Kevin Owens is doing well in WWE despite the losses to John Cena. He's the IC champion. He's picking up wins. He beat Cesaro on Raw. He was in the main event. WWE still giving him a significant push. And I think if Kevin Owens continues to have strong performances, he will continue to do well. The cream does rise to the top. And the guys with the most talent, um, maybe with the exception of Cesaro, I don't know about that, but as far as Kevin Owens goes, um, he hasn't been buried yet. You know, people like to throw that word around, buried. Kevin Owens is still getting pushed, and I think if he continues to go out there and have great matches, he will continue to be pushed in WWE and will continue to have a prominent role in the company. All right, this one comes from Daniel Davis. Hey, Aaron, do you think Roman Reigns has improved? And do you feel this push will be successful now? Please answer in video. Roman Reigns has been getting better reactions, and he's definitely been improving. And he's had several high-profile matches that have been really good. I, I thought the Hell in a Cell match with Bray Wyatt was a really strong match. I thought WrestleMania was a strong match. He had a really good match with the Big Show, better than anybody was expecting, I think, except for diehard Roman Reigns fans. Uh, he, he's really been stepping it up in WWE. His weakest area is his promos. As long as WWE keeps him away from the mic and doesn't give him really bad lines to say on live television, he should do fine. Let him go out there and be an ass kicker. That's what got him over in the Shield in the first place. He was the muscle of the Shield. He was doing all this cool stuff and people were getting behind him. And uh, I really liked the match on Raw. The main event was really good. You had Roman Reigns um, countering the pop-up powerbomb with the Superman punch. That was awesome. Stuff like that 
will help get Roman Reigns over. Just keep him away from the mic and especially keep him away from the really cheesy scripted promos and trying to make him Cena 2.0. If WWE just lets him be a badass and let him go out there and do his thing, um, I think that this time he could be successful and, and might be able to take that top spot as the, the face of the company in the future. All right, this one comes from Jake. Could an international hashtag turn off Raw week or month organized by fans convince WWE to make real and positive creative changes? It would take a lot. Let's face it. There are maybe a few thousand people, maybe 10,000 people, 20,000 people, whatever number it is, I really don't feel it's significant enough to make a real difference. If 10, if 10, let's just say 10,000 people, if 10,000 people all got together and didn't watch Raw, that's 10,000 people out of three and a half million people that watch Raw. It's not going to make a dent in the ratings. You would need like half a million people to turn off Raw all together and you know, you'd have to get all those people cooperating at the same time for WWE to even blink, blink an eye, bat an eye, whatever you want to call it. Um, it it's probably not going to happen. Fans can complain all they want and WWE will will listen to a degree and companies should listen. When, when consumers speak out about a product, the company should listen and, and, and get some feedback. But at the end of the day, WWE's making money. They're going to continue doing what they're doing, whether a small minority likes it or not. So, you know, I complain about Raw. I give my thoughts. I critique the shows. But at the end of the day, my opinion really means nothing. And um, thousands of fans, they're upset that Roman Reigns uh, won the Royal Rumble. You know, WWE did change plans. But at the end of the day, they're, they're still trying to build up Roman Reigns as the top guy. So, you know, they just have to listen to feedback and do the best they can. All right, this one comes from Philip Goodman. Who was your favorite or most underrated wrestler from the WWE version of ECW? The Zombie. No, just kidding. I would have to say Marcus Corvan, the former Monty Brown in TNA. I felt that he had a lot of potential, not just in TNA, but when he got to WWE, I thought for sure he was going to move on to bigger and better things. But, you know, I don't, I'm not sure what happened exactly. I believe he had some sort of uh, personal issue and, and had to uh, take care of his family. And uh, he got out of the wrestling business and he just disappeared. He never came back and uh, nobody's heard from him. Um, he, he definitely, in my opinion, was one of the top uh, most promising guys that was brought into the ECW roster. Um, I, I just felt he, he had it. He, he, had, he had the look. He had the pounce. Um, he, he had momentum in TNA and, and they dropped the ball on him. He came to WWE and things just didn't work out. All right, this one comes from Daniel Davis. Hey, Aaron, what are your thoughts on Stone Cold Steve Austin being the guest host for WrestleMania 32? Please answer in video. I think that that would be a perfectly fine way to utilize Steve Austin for WrestleMania. Um, they've done pretty much everything there is to do with Austin. I mean, he's been the special referee several times. They've, they've had him come out and cut a promo with The Rock and Hulk Hogan. Um, you know, they could have him be the guest host. It would make sense because it is in Texas and it would give Austin something to do. Um, so yeah, I, I would be perfectly fine with that. I'm not sure what else you could do with Austin besides just have him show up and cut a promo. So you might as well just make him the guest host so you can put him on the banners and advertise him. And, uh, you know, you, you, you get your use out of Stone Cold Steve Austin for WrestleMania. All right. This one comes from Chosen Boy. Do you think a wrestler's theme music plays at at least a plays at least a 25% role in getting them over with the live and television audience? Well, Scott Steiner might debate if that's 25% or 33.5% or 40% or I don't know. Um, I feel it definitely makes a difference. It's not the end all be all. It's not the deciding factor if somebody's going to be over or not. But I do feel that theme music can help elevate a character. I mean, it, it, it's about the entire package. It's about how you perform in the ring. It's about your promos. It's about your look. It's about your music. It's just the, the entire package put together is what makes a superstar. So I do feel theme music is important. And there are guys that, 
haven't been that memorable that have had interesting theme songs and you remember them for the theme songs. Uh, guys like Rob Conway, you know, he, he didn't really do a lot in WWE besides Law Resistance, but then he, he uh, had his own theme music and, uh, you know, that's what I remember about him the most during his WWE run. Um, so yeah, it, it just depends, but I do feel it can enhance a superstar um, by having unique, memorable theme music. Alright, got this question here from Nick Easy. Would you like to see The Rock be on Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast? I think that The Rock would be your most logical choice to be on Austin's podcast. Um, looking at all the potential candidates to be on Austin's podcast, I mean, The Rock seems like your biggest option because him and Austin were arch rivals. They, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe at three WrestleManias and... Um, they had so many memorable matches and segments over the years during the Attitude Era. Makes perfect sense for The Rock to be there. And especially if The Rock's going to be involved at WrestleMania 32, you know, that would be a great way to help promote WrestleMania by having The Rock and Steve Austin on a podcast and, um, you know, get people talking about The Rock. Especially if The Rock's going to have a match at WrestleMania and who knows if that's going to happen at this point. But if it does, you know, I, I think either way, whether The Rock's going to be WrestleMania or not, I think it's inevitable he will be on Austin's podcast, and um, absolutely I'd love to see it. So I, I, th I think that that'll be a great one, no pun intended. All right, this one comes from Elijah B. Could you see WWE having someone like Finn Balor win the WWE title on NXT like RVD won on ECW? Please answer in video, thanks. I doubt it. The thing about NXT is it's clearly the developmental brand and I don't think WWE wants to take it to another level. I think they want to keep NXT as the developmental league and you know ECW they were trying to make um, the third brand kind of but not really equal to Raw and SmackDown as much as they were going to go. I mean, they re they really did a lazy job with it. I think uh, you know ECW would have had a better chance of lasting longer if um, you know they were given more time and you know taken more seriously. Um, but with NXT, um, I just don't see that happening. You know, NXT's on the network. Raw and SmackDown are on national television, and uh, I don't think WWE will go there. I I would be really surprised if they went in that direction anytime soon if ever. All right, that'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and a video. Thanks for watching. Even if you're not a fan of the beard and if you're going to complain about the beard, for every person that complains, I'm going to keep it an extra month. So there you have it. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com. We got post Hell in the Cell news, news regarding Survivor Series. NoDQ.com has got you covered with all the latest news and rumors in the world of wrestling. And on that note, I will see you guys next time for another edition of No DQ&A video.